Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Super Power User. My name is Stanley, and today we're gonna to be talking about power lines, what they are, what they could do for you, uh, whether or not these things are worth it, and some real life benchmarks. So stay tuned. So what's a power line ethernet system? Well, basically power line ethernet kits are usually comprised of multiple adapters such as this, and it takes the existing uh, wire network that's comprised of your switches and your routers and your modems and extends it throughout your entire house using the power line, existing power lines in your house that's behind your walls. So essentially the way they work is you, know, you can take a RJ45 ca uh, ethernet cable, plug it into your switch or your modem or your router and plug it into the bottom of these adapters. And then uh, from there, you can plug this into the wall out outlet sockets and it converts the signals from your existing network into a compatible signal that is sent through the power lines. At the other end, you can take the other adapter, plug it into the wall, plug this ethernet you know, cable directly into whatever device you want, a switch or a computer, and you will receive basically the signal from this power uh, line adapter to this power line adapter, and your computer will basically see it as just an extension of the network. The kit I've got here is the Netgear Powerline 1200 kit. The 1200 suggests that it's good up to 1200 megabits per second, and it comes with two adapters and two RJ45 ethernet cables. On the front of this adapter, you can see here, it's got a power socket pass through so that you don't completely lose access to the socket that you're covering with this device. And on the bottom, you've got a single RJ45 ethernet cable port, a factory reset button uh, that you'll need a paper clip to access, and a button for pairing. Uh, these two devices, two modules come pre-paired already, but this button allows you to pair additional adapters to this. So personally, I've got four in my house already. And from what I read, this kit is good for up to 16 uh, adapters so that you can add to this network and extend you know, this network very easily throughout your entire house. Other features on the front is you got three LEDs. The first is the power LED. The second is the network device that's plugged in LED. So it'll be green if you've got something plugged into it. The third LED is the signal strength LED through the power line. So because the power line uh, signals, you know, you, deg you may lose some signal strength through the walls and every house is different. Uh, it will tell you the kind of signal that you're getting. So if it's green, that means you're getting more than 80 megabits per second. If it uh, if you're getting less than 80 megabits, it turns amber, and if it you drop below 50 megabits per second, then it turns red. What you could do is you could go throughout your house and you can plug this device in to see what kind of signals that you get, and you know you can pick the best sockets to be able to connect to your devices throughout your entire house. Now I know I said this kit is rated for 1200 megabits per second. Um, in reality, real world performance is actually quite a bit less than 1200 megabits per second. Um, it seems like it's a common recurring theme in this networking industry where they advertise a speed that's quite a bit more than real life, real world situations, S similar to wireless routers and other power line uh, kits out there. This Netgear kit is no different. So what we'll do is take a look at some real world tests. Uh, what we'll do is connect these two very close together, right in sockets right next to each other, and then we'll connect these on opposite sides of the house to see, give you guys an idea of uh, the potential that this kit has. So for this test situation, what I've got here is the uh, NAS, along with a uh, wired switch connected to the power line. You can see here, I've got a wired cable connected to the switch. And what we'll do is pull files directly from the NAS on sockets around the house to see what the speeds are. 
All right, so what I've got here is the module connected into the wall, and I've got uh, the Ethernet cable directly connected to this laptop. The first thing I want to do is the speed test, and what you'll see is the speed test performance, you know, doing decent, but nowhere near the full gigabit per second. Uh, what you'll see is it tops out about 220 to 250 megabits per second down, along with you know, about the same megabits per second up. So this would suggest that the maximum speed of this power line is right around 225 to 250 megabits per second. So next I want to pull a file directly from the NAS to this laptop over this power line connection. Um, as you can see here, I'm pulling about 25 to 30 megabytes per second. Uh, that's kind of same in the same ballpark as the 250 megabits per second. So I think it's safe to say that the overhead or the maximum potential of this power line system is about the 200 to 250 megabits per second. Um, it's not very surprising because it performs similarly to other devices, other power line devices, um, especially in the close proximity. That's about right. Uh, what we'll do next is go downstairs and we'll take a look at the worst case scenario, at least for this house. All right, now I've got the exact same setup with the module connected to the wall and to the wires to the computer. Um, we're actually quite a bit distance away from the source, from the other power line source. And what you can see here is the internet test is pulling about 60 to 70 megabits per second down. And of course, the upload is going to be pretty similar as well. It seems like we've lost almost 150 megabits per second uh, just from the increased distance. So it's kind of to be expected. Um, but now that we're doing 60 or 70 megabits per second over... I want to say this is probably maybe 50 feet away. Uh, it's quite a bit less than the 1200 megabits per second that this system is rated for. But again, 60 megabits per second, that's plenty for most internet needs or most streaming needs. But again, it's nowhere near the one gigabit per second connection speed that I've got for this house. Similarly, I've got, um, you know, pulling from the NAS in an ideal situation here. You can see I'm going to be pulling about nine, eight or nine megabytes per second, which is, and it's about the same similar amount of speed. Um, I like can see topping out 10 megabytes per second. That's about pretty much as good as you're going to get for this location. So, you know, not surprising, but not that good either. All right, let's try to summarize basically what we saw. So when the adapters are close together in sockets right next to each other, you get a respectable 200 to 250 megabits per second, which is plenty fast for most internet connections. Uh, you know, For example, if you have 100 megabits per second, then you have quite a bit of overhead to sustain that connection. But when they're further apart, perhaps upstairs or downstairs, or if your house is really big on opposite sides of the house, you lose quite a bit of bandwidth um, as you increase the distance. So what we saw there was from the upstairs downstairs, the speeds dropped down to about 50 to 60, maybe 70 megabits per second. Another thing to note is that even though we were only pulling about 60 or 70 megabits per second, the amber light never turned on. It was green the entire time. So that meant the adapter thought that this was a good connection. I would absolutely hate to see what a red light means in terms of overall bandwidth. Now to answer the question, is this power line kit worth it? Well, basically you have to ask yourself a few questions to understand why you want a kit like this. Is it to extend the wireless signal throughout the entire house because in a corner of the house you don't get good reception? Or is it because uh, your wireless bandwidth is too slow and you want to increase overall bandwidth to your devices? Or is it because you don't want to pull Cat5e cables all over the house and or drill holes in the wall. Uh, and you think that using the power lines is a great way to extend your wires, wired network. 
To me, there's only one reason why you would buy a power line kit, and for all the other reasons, there's probably better alternatives. Um, the reason why you would buy this is because you want to extend the connection throughout your house, but you're really not interested in high bandwidth. So um, from one side of the house to the other side of the house, as long as you get 50 to 60 megabits per second and you're happy with it, that's fine. It works great. It's very easy to set up. It's very easy to maintain, and it just works. If you're looking for higher bandwidth, then this is probably not the best way to go because 50 to 60 megabits per second, that's well within uh, wireless bandwidth speeds. And you actually may be better buying a wireless mesh system to be able to blanket the entire house with internet connections, and you may be getting a better signal or better speed than the 50 or 60 or 70 megabits per second that you get from this power line system. I know for a fact that my Airport Extreme downstairs uh, is an AC wireless router, uh, gives me about 100 or at least 150 megabits per second over Wi-Fi upstairs. So it was already performing better than this. In the end, I ended up not using the Netgear Powerline 1200 kit. Uh, what I did was I drilled a hole in the wall and ran a Cat 6A cable from upstairs to downstairs where the internet comes into my house and I've got a router, you know, broadcasting a wireless signal downstairs and also would broadcast a wireless signal upstairs for that better coverage. Uh, it's using the CAT6A cable um, on a 10 gigabit ethernet wired network. So I get that fast bandwidth from upstairs to downstairs. So I've been able to achieve the high bandwidth along with the good wireless coverage. Uh, basically, I wasn't able to use this because it was just not fast enough for my needs. Perhaps for you, you might, you know, your priorities might be different and maybe 70 or 100 megabits is sufficient for your needs. Then I would recommend this system. It's actually not too bad. Uh, only as long as you realize that there are bandwidth limitations on this device. So if you found this video useful, make sure to hit that like button and perhaps consider subscribing for future videos. We'll see you in the next one.